Hello. So before we go to the hands-on part, I would like to take five or ten minutes and to talk about uh, an introduction of the software suite Laney, uh, like what it entails, how it's built, what the basic structure is, and then we can uh, see how to install it and, and do the standard analysis pipelines. So Laney is, stands for Layers Nifty. It's a software package dedicated for layer-dependent fMRI. It has been originally developed when I was still um, working at NIH under the supervision and being inspired by Peter Banettini. And at that time, I received a lot of input from the AFNI group, particularly Paul Taylor, Rick Reynolds, and, and Daniel Glenn. After I moved to Maastricht, now working under the supervision of Benedict Poser, I'm continuing de developing it. And there, I also receive a lot of input from Farouk Gülban. Farouk basically restructured everything, professionalized the code, and also augmented the software suite uh, with additional features while working in the company of Rainer Göbel and being inspired by him and his tools. The algorithms in Laney have been validated and um, tested for, by means of data from many collaborators, particularly here uh, noteworthy, the big brain and the layer segmentation from Konrad Waxdio. We got some CAT data from Jin Hong Cho, CMRR. Yusin Gönze, Tyler Morgan, and Niels Nordlagel also provided some high resolution human visual experiments that are used for validation. And also Scanexus supported this um, project here and impersonated by Job van den Hoek in by means of many, many scan hours to, to get data to, to test in this project. So I will, as I said, give an overview of the software package and then I go step by step through the installation and also the some um, standard ins um, applications of the programs. This Zoom session has two breakout rooms at the main session, which we are right now. However, note that there's this second uh, breakout room where Farouk, the, the other main developer of Laney, is uh, having a more interactive Q&A. Given the number of participants now, we can probably not go through all the specific error messages that you might have during installations. Farouk has the time. So, so switch breakout rooms if you have specific questions that you would like to discuss with Farouk. Also with respect to applications and algorithms. So Laney, as I said, stands for Layers and Nifties, and it's written in C++, completely um, open source and available in Linux, Mac OS, and Windows. The unique feature of Laney is that it does all the layerification analysis directly in voxel space, in the voxels of your Nifty data, which can be your distorted EPI if you want. Installation instructions, um, example pipelines, and uh, tutorial video tutorials are on GitHub, and we will uh, get to that. The reason why we've developed Laney is coming from the challenge in the field of layer-dependent fMRI to have these very high, incredibly high requirements of the quality of the analysis, still while working with these kind of messy, non-standardized data. So we want a lot with messy data, which is a challenge. For example, here I'm shown in the top, the high spatial resolution that we are working with in layer-dependent fMRI is often only achievable with reasonable TRs by using small field of views, like these kind of slab data. These kind of slab data, however, do not fulfill the kind of topology requirements that most mesh-based or surface-based analysis packages require. Um, for example, having closed surfaces without holes, especially here, just um, zooming through the superficial layers, you see that we end up with these unconnected spots. So we need layering tools that also work with these kind of messy data. The, the other second big challenge um, why we need Laney is what I call the beer wine dilemma. So in the encoding limited regime of submillimeter fMRI, we are limited by study specific and even participant specific MRI artifacts. So that the study protocols are usually really optimized for one specific purpose, like one area that you care about particularly. This means that the data from that very optimized specific study cannot easily be pushed through a pipeline that has been developed for another layer dependent study. So while conventional fMRI representing the beer here has been standardized over like decades to be homogeneously pushable through standard pipelines like done by multinational beer corporations, this is not true yet for, for layer dependent fMRI and might never will be possible. Like for example, for wine, where we have these kind of highly specialized data and the study specific protocols and challenges need much more interactive flexibility and quality control, especially in these early days of the field. 
So like wine, you get the um, best result and highest quality by not homogenizing the processing in a Henry Ford like assembly line production, but rather allowing more flexibility across regions, like representing maybe the years or the countries here or the data type that the user are working with. So we need a layer fMRI tool that allows us to have a very flexible balance of the user interventions on one hand without the risk of biased data manipulation on the other hand. Furthermore, in layer-dependent fMRI, unconventional non-bold contrasts like vaso or vapor are popular, which consist of these control and label images that need to be dynamically sorted and processed with minimum noise amplification. So we need convenient tools for those too. And last but not least, layer fMRI data are also particularly challenged by these low bandwidth artifacts and in particularly low SNR, which needs to be addressed somewhere during the analysis too. These are all layer fMRI challenges that most software packages have, have never really been built for. And of course, uh, most software packages have their workarounds and, and um, are able to deal with those challenges, for example, in combination with auxiliary data like whole brain reference or distortion correction or alignment, which comes along with a lot of other different challenges too. Uh, so uh, Laney is designed to work in tandem with those other tools of, of other software packages. And in fact, Laney has received a lot of input from the developers of, of the software packages um, listed here. For example, I mentioned Afni already, especially in the early days of Laney, we received also a lot of input ideas, code snippets, and, and feedback from Pilou, the author of NIRES and CBS tools. So Laney is particularly um, trying to not re-implement um, or, or be in co um, competition with these software tools. And therefore, Laney also does not contain these tools and, and the analyses that are already implemented and that work very well. For example, alignment tools or, or segmentation tools or any kind of surface um, or mesh-based analyses for layers for that matter. So now I would like to talk about um, the main applications in Laney uh, um, and the program examples that Laney got a lot of attention for in the, in the recent years. And I would like to start maybe by the layerification in kind of very small field of view, truncated um, ROIs. Here, for example, uh, zooming into a tiny part of the brain in this very high resolution ex vivo data set in the primary visual cortex, where you can see that the layerification here, for example, with LN2 layers, um, shows that the equidistance approach kind of underestimates the, the curvature overestimation or the curvature amplification of the Stree of Genari here. And therefore, Laney nicely also spits out the equivolume approach, which nicely follows the kind of histological Stree of Genari here. You can also um, validate the Laney algorithms here in this whole brain 3D 100 micron big brain data set that we received from, from Conrad with the uh, respective segmentations. And there you can see that the equidistant approach again, it does not fit the histological layers as nice as the equivolume approach also implemented in, in Laney, uh, particularly at these high resolutions here. For, for fMRI, it might not matter that much. Another core program in Laney is the columns generation by iterative dividing the 3D co um, voxel ribbon, allowing the user to kind of unfold and flatten the cortex without interpolation of vertices, but as a just as a voxel intensity remapping. So for example, here, it might be useful to depict topological fMRI data, like the somatotopic arrangement in the sensory motor system. So here taking the central sulcus, or especially the anterior bank of the central sulcus um, as a kind of folded 2D voxel ribbon, which you can then um, orthogonalize along layers and columns and sulcal depth, and basically write that out as an additional nifty volume with these three dimensions completely orthogonalized. And then you can look at the finger representations here in these different axes. Laney also contains deveining tools using model-based approaches to minimize like draining effects in gradient echo bolt data using these kind of um, previously um, described and published formalisms to kind of convert the gradient echo bolt data into uh, signal maps that look closer to kind of non-bold contrast, especially reducing the, the superficial uh, draining rain bias. In some cases, when you can assume that you, the neighboring columns have very similar activity, layer-specific smoothing without signal leakage across layers can also um, help be helpful to deal with the high noise level of individual runs, especially with like depending on the, on the smoothing kernel here. 
Now, with respect to a layer-specific smoothing or also the previous slide, the cortical um, like model-based deveining approaches, I would like to mention the kind of principle behind Laney that we adopted from, from the AFNI principle, namely that we try to provide mechanisms, not policies. So we aim to give the user the power to assemble their computing pieces and pipelines to do their analysis um, without really telling them uh, what to do. We will provide mechanisms, not policies, right? This puts some extra burden on the user because now the user needs to know if it's okay to, to apply the smoothing, for example, or the deveining in this particular case. So the user needs to understand what the programs do if the, the underlying assumptions are valid in the respective application. And in order to give the user the chance to really understand it and um, there are a lot of uh, materials and that i will um, point you to in a second and before i go there i first want to not only thank all the contributors in the author list i showed you in the first slide but also all the other kind of contributors with respect to like issue um, authors and by issue i mean github issue authors idea givers bug hunters users of laney that gave us a uh, very nice feedback if you are interested in application examples of Lenin, you can check out a few examples at this very conference. For example, Sebastian Dresbach showed a poster just yesterday. And you can also look at the videos on, on ISMREM, which came up um, and online, I think, uh, two or three days ago or so, too. Um, the paper has been accepted in Neuroimage, and I think it will be um, openly gold open access available on the Elsevier website in a few days now. And with respect to the description of the algorithm, really into detail, there are a few blog posts that describe the respective programs. For example, here, the things on things or the layer fmi.com. So let's, let's click on it. And um, this is opening here now. So this is Farouk's blog where he describes um, some of, of the Lenny programs here, for example, one about columns. I think there's one coming up about the, the flattening, multilaterate. Uh, I particularly like the one about uh, the layering algorithms where he describes the algorithms by means of this kind of uh, recipe, like an avocado toast recipe, first describing the terminology, then there are all these kind of intuitively understandable GIF animations, how the cortex is kind of expanded, and then, then also how streamlines are calculated, and then all the, the kind of basics behind that. Um, there's also this other blog, namely layerfmri.com, if you type in slash categories Laney, then it will give you all the um, blog posts that are particularly designed to, to explain what Laney programs do. There's one about setting up Laney, one about the dangers of equivoluming, when to apply it and when, one, when it doesn't make so much sense. Um, about the deveining, maybe I, I click on this one just as an example. This is about quality um, assurance in layer dependent fMRI data, why we need it, and how the artifacts usually look like, and then also kind of the, the outputs of, of Lenny programs, what to look out there, and um, uh, how to interpret them, and so on. And with this, I think we can jump right in and go to the hands-on part, um, namely on, on GitHub, there are explanations on how to set up Lenny. Um, so on GitHub, um, you can see that there are issue pages. I definitely want to show you that one. On GitHub, layer fmri slash Laney, there are issues. There are a few closed ones and then still open ones. Check those out if you have specific issues because then uh, maybe we, we solved it already. And then there's a description about it also. Um, with respect, with respect to, to questions about algorithms or how to use it, we would prefer if you write an issue here because then users can help users and, and the different developers can help you because e email is not the best uh, way of, of, of code support in the sense that, that it, it might take a, a lot of patience from your side before they are answered. So, so uh, check out this issue page. Now let's... Um, let's um, go to the virtual box and, and set it up. So um, there are descriptions on how to set it up, namely on the blog that I, I just uh, showed you, and uh, namely here setting it up. Um, you can uh, choose which system you, you have, and then there is the respective um, instruction on how to, to install it. Like for, for macOS, you can use the pre-compiled uh, binaries. You can also compile it on your own with a little video um, instruction where you can click along. Now I want to install Laney in the same environment that PLOE used this morning. Namely, I will close my um, PowerPoint session now and go to my virtual environment. 
So this is the identical setup now that, that Pilou uses. Maybe I can make this a bit bigger. There we go. And then I open a, a web browser and just type in lay ni set up. And then it's probably the top hit here, uh, namely the, the layer fmri.com blog. And I go to Linux now. This is an Ubuntu version. So I want, I don't want to compile it. Actually, I think it's easiest to download the binaries, namely uh, downloading the binaries, pre-compiled binaries for, for Linux is available again back on, on, on GitHub. And this is the latest version is the 2.0 version. And there you can download the binaries for Linux, Mac OS, Windows, and or the source code. So now I want to download the binaries for Linux. And I, I download it. This takes a few seconds. And here I have my binaries. I want to extract them uh, probably somewhere um, at the desktop or so. So I extract it. This takes a few seconds. And now we are done. So we can close our web browser. We don't need it now. So now we have this folder over here, which has all the Laney binaries. So let's go into that folder, open a terminal right there. And I make this terminal a bit bigger now. I hope this comes across in Zoom uh, good enough. So for example, the e uh, maybe easiest Laney program is ln underscore info. Um, I didn't set the path, so I do dot, dot slash Allen info. And for each lady program, you have a little like text blurb at the beginning telling you what it does. So this basically it just looks at the header information and then gives you the basic features of the nifty image. Um, you can compile it like that. Don't worry about it. Now we, we have the pre-compiled versions. Usually you execute it by giving it an input name, namely a, a nifty. So let's just do that. Um, slash dot slash nifty minus input and now we can give it any um, nifty or nifty gz file for example let's give it the same file that that pilou used this morning uh, maybe in um, home i think my username is renzo on this one i think pilou has like some inversion um, i guess this is a magnitude image so here it gives you the, the basic features of this image it has um, 118 um, matrix size in the set direction. This is the resolution. It has a, a float 64 data type and the minimum, maximum and, and standard deviation and so on. If you want, you can also uh, look at it with kind of a bit of ASCII art here in the terminal. I think we have three or four um, intensity. So you, you kind of, this is not meant for you to take a screenshot and put it onto your paper, but just as a quick and dirty look at, at what the kind of images look like. If you ha are one of those people who have the, um, at the white terminal, you can also execute it with minus inf, and then you, you use kind of little um, different ASCII's to, 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 to browse through the image. So this is how, how Laney works. You execute it by um, calling the binary from the terminal. Now, if you want to um, execute it um, without giving it the absolute path, we need to set it up in, we need to set up the, the bash RC, like the path. So, so let's go to our bash RC. This is probably in home. And I think I can, I, it's usually starting with a dot. So I need to show hidden files and there's our bash RC. And there's all the kind of stuff set up already that um, Pilou uh, helped uh, and, and had in his instruction. So here we want to set up the Laney part. So we take the same thing that Pilou had in his instruction about the ants path, but now we want to give it the Laney path. And I think um, this was uh, on desktop, Laney Linux, this is the path. So now I'm control shift seeing this, I'm copying it in my uh, right copy paste and now control V, this is our path. I save this with control S and can close it again. And now I open another terminal because the, the bash RC is only executed uh, like when you start a terminal or you source the bash RC. Anyway, so now if we have um, the path set, now we can execute Allen info without a dot slash and it will work anywhere in your, in your file and tree for that matter. 
I will try to make my terminal a bit bigger here um, so you can see it a bit better. Um, it somehow changes the window size too, so I will, uh, maybe this is a good compromise, so you see what I'm typing a bit better. Now let's go back to, to the Laney and folder and we can um, use some of the standard analyses in, in Laney. I'm not sure what to start with, maybe a simple QA. So here we have a few um, um, example data sets that come with the Laney installation and maybe we can look at a standard bold time series, namely the low bold in temp, which is basically a time series that is not upscaled, that's why it's called low. And I'm opening it with ITK because that um, is what um, the installation came with. So this is a bold time series. I think if we uh, go through the different time points, we can see that there are now different time points. So this is a time series. Let's look at that time series with all kind of maybe low level quality measures. So maybe the LN um, SKU is a, a program that kind of looks at uh, quality measures of layer dependent fMRI, particularly here now, uh, looking at uh, something like, mm, like a SKU and um, ghosting and then and, and kind of autocorrelation, kind of the very simple thing that you can easily implement in Python 2 if you want. But Laney also spits out um, be because very often layer fMRI artifacts are visible in those. So now it, we have already an error. It says it cannot read the nifty file. And I know why, because uh, we are in the Laney folder, but the data are in the subfolder test data. So we can either execute it with um, input dot slash test data, or we just go to that folder and execute it from there. So now um, you get a little text blurb again, and I think we are cutting the screen here. So it gives you like the number of um, voxels, the resolution, and then it writes out a few example images. And let's look at those example images. Where are they now? So here we have them. So it takes the input file name and then adds a little um, suffix at the end. For example, the mean is, is, is like easy, but you, um, <laughs> Let's look at that a bit bigger. Yes, that's the one. So we can, for example, look at uh, uh, maybe what do we want, like TSNR makes sense. You know uh, what to look for in, in TSNR. Um, he, namely that the surface is very often a bit brighter because uh, CSF is bright. However, you also have these large training veins that make it darker because of the physiological noise. Um, let's look at the overall correlation. Uh, which I think uh, very often shows kind of the overall ongoing also physiological noise. So we uh, have our motor cortex somewhere over here. So there might be some task driven overall fluctuation, but also all this uh, white stuff around it, especially maybe here, this might be motion and um, that is obviously correlated across the entire image. Maybe more interesting is the autocorrelation, which we, um, where we have this kind of ring that shows that um, the kind of low frequency component um, um, has some motion in there, especially also the, the ghosting up there. So, which we didn't really see in the mean image. So if you are kind of ghost hunting, then uh, looking at something like the autocorrelation uh, might be um, a, a nice thing to do. Um, maybe another quality measure is the Allen noise kernel. Underscore kernel. So this is executed by um, giving it an input and a kernel size. So maybe let's um, just execute it like that. Now we go to um, the test folder and execute that one. L and noise kernel, we give it uh, now an old image. Uh, maybe for, for a consistency, let's use the bold here too. And this basically, um, this is explained on the on the blog over there. I'm not sure if that's opening, maybe not. So if you go to this link, which somehow I cannot select now, then it explains uh, what it does. Namely, it basically estimates the correlation of each voxel with its neighbor, with its next neighbor, with its next next neighbor, and so on. And then it spits out a three-dimensional um, correlation matrix, basically the noise kernel that you can use to, to see how well the, 
the signal is correlated with each other. And um, this is namely uh, this file, which I would like to view in my ITK snap now. So here you can uh, maybe um, see, not sure how well this comes across, and that obviously the center correlates with itself a lot. Maybe I can make this a bit bigger. And how can I zoom in? Zoom to fit. This is not helpful. Maybe I put it back in again and it resets. There we go. So we have kind of a leakage between neighboring voxels. And then also there is maybe anti-correlation due to kind of the side lobes in EPI, uh, which you can then also look at it in, in, in three directions. If I can make this bigger a bit. So you see that in the phase encoding direction, there there's a more leakage, for example, compared to the read direction, um, which would be here that the up down one. So it gives you kind of a measure of how um, coupled neighboring voxels are. So next let's go to the uh, layers. So uh, maybe I can first show you the kind of uh, data that I would be interested in um, to look at layers here. So this is, uh, a T1 weighted EPI um, of the motor cortex. Um, so you see that kind of hand knob, epsilon shaped kind of like there. So for a finger tapping activity, I would expect activity between uh, maybe here and there. The um, pinch movement might be somewhere in these quarters over there. So uh, we can look at the activity map, which would be the, uh, maybe let's look at the bold. If I find it, there would be a bold activity map um load as maybe additional image um did that work i don't see it maybe i need the contrast uh, this is the background t1 i want the bold contrast maybe something here between i don't know anything above zero and uh, maybe i put make it in red Oh yes, so we see this is the area that we kind of care about. And I need to select this one to reduce the occupancy or not. Uh, I know there's a keyboard trick. I think it's A and D, is it? Okay, this is doing the same thing, which does not seem to make it um, more transparent or not. Anyway, this is the area that we, that we care about, where we would maybe uh, like to extract our layers from. So. Um, I will reload that as main image, and then we can start um, segmenting it directly in the EPI data. So how do you zoom like that? So in uh, Laney, it expects um, segmentations, um, namely the, the surface uh, with a value of one, the gray matter with a value of three, and the, the white matter border with the value of two. So let's, for the sake of convenience here now, uh, segment it using the segmentation tool. Maybe a, a brush size of two would do the trick. And now we are um, drawing and painting uh, border lines uh, with a value of one. And I usually, I'm quite conservative. So I usually inc include a lot of uh, like um, CSF there because you can always cut it later. And somehow I don't seem to be um, drawing anything right now. Paint over all labels, maybe that's why. Ah, there we go. So now I'm kind of drawing the surface here with value of one. Then with value of two, I'm drawing the, the gray matter, white matter border, which is sometimes a bit more tricky, especially in the motor cortex, which is so heavily myelinated that the, the contrast between gray matter and white matter is kind of weak, but especially always at these kind of high curvature radii, we, we di there directly see, okay, white matter is somewhere there. And then I extrapolate it from there. And maybe I'm interested in this uh, part of the, the, the brain. And then I fill it up with threes and maybe use a bigger brush size here because I don't want to do it for too long. Um, I just fill it up, um, anything in between. So this is a very crude way of now doing the segmentation. Um, note that Laney does not have an automatic segmentation in there. If you want to use segmentation, use the um, approach that Pilou showed this morning, or if you want to do it in a kind of a more semi-manual way, 
and semi-automatic way, I think Segmentator is a very nice tool uh, there too. For the tiny parts in this limited uh, field of use that I'm usually working with, it's easy, most easiest and most trustworthy and most accurate if I do it manually. So now I, I did my segmentation and this is the area where I would like to extract my layers from. So now I save this segmentation as, save segmentation image maybe as a rim file, rim.nifty or something. So I save this. And now within my folder, I should have a rim.nifty. And we can use that to extract layers now. So uh, let's extract them and uh, calculate layers based on the segmentation with ln2 underscore layers. And then it uh, tells me again uh, what it does, how you can execute it, um, what the different mandatory and, and optional parameters are, and also some blog posts on how to um, find out how to use it. So maybe I can use the most simple case of um, equidistance layers here, um, which requires a rim file. I conveniently called it rim.nifty already. Uh, we definitely need to give it the number of layers. I don't know, let's use 11 layers. Um, the, the number of layers obviously depends on the resolution you have. Uh, so so it, very often for me, it makes a lot of sense to um, do the segmentation and the, the layering in a kind of upsample space. Still, you can keep your functional data in, in whatever space you want, but um, it's often better to have as many layers as possible, uh, which is also described on, on a blog post. So now um, this generated 11 layers, it spit out a metric and the layers. So the metric is basically the same thing as the layers, but not binned. Maybe let's look at that, that you can um, see it better. Um, uh, rim underscore metric equidist, load as additional image maybe, which did not seem to work. I'm, I'm new to, to um, ITK snap, so maybe I just load it as a main image, then I see it. So here now uh, we have each voxel, and um, based on the voxel centroid has a uh, a number that you can see here. So this is layer 0.698 or whatever. This is layer 0.5, this is layer 0.9 something. If you want to divide it and bin it into the 11 layers that we generated, then we end up with, um, this is the mid query matter, sorry. I want the, the, the layers, this file is what I want. So here we have the, the layers kind of binned into 11 layers. If you want to have the maximum number of layers, obviously you use the, the metric. So now we have those layers and we can now try to extract the signal, for example, the bold signal from these uh, layers. And there's a linking program, namely ln, um, ln2 uh, layers, I think, or profile, ln2, is it profile, that's the one. So this one reads in nifty files based on and, and layers and then and writes out a text file of the, the signal intensity in each layer. So maybe I can um, type it out. Laney profiles, I need an input. The input image would be an activity map. So again, we can use the scaled um, and bold activity map. And then we need uh, layers minus layers where we have the rim underscore um, layers equidist and then let's also uh, plot it kind of to look at it uh, very uh, quickly so this is the bold profile now so it spits out a text file and this text file is uh, maybe where do i have this text file this is my text file so this is basically just a ascii table the first column is the number of layers the second column is the number of like the mean value of the voxels within that layer. The next column is the standard deviation of the voxels within that layer. And then the last column is the number of voxels within that layer. And also for quick, easy uh, visualization, you can see it in the terminal here. So we see that um, the CSF border is probably somewhere there because I was very generous, including a lot of CSF. And then the signal decreases towards white matter like that. Now, for example, we can also look at that um, with another image, maybe with uh, VASO for that matter, um, where you see that we don't have this bias. If you really want to see it, maybe there's a double bump up there that the superficial layers are bright, and then there's a, another one there. And this obviously really depends on kind of how you choose your, your ROIs. But definitely in VASO, it, it, there's not this huge gradient um, in there as expected. And again, now we have a, a text file 
that would be um, right over there, which uh, types out, uh, writes out the uh, intensities and then obviously the number of voxels is the same because that's RY specific. So now maybe we can do a zoom poll and to see what, what you would like to um, talk about next. Okay, I start that. So would you rather have me um, describe another Laney program, for example, um, Ellen Smooth, like how to do smoothing in Laney, or would you rather um, talk about more of the quality measures in Laney? Would you rather uh, learn more about kind of column analyses in Laney, or would you uh, rather have an open question and answer session, or would you rather um, have a kind of overview of, of what all the remaining Laney programs do? Okay, I'll give you 10 seconds. Okay, it seems that you want to get an overview. Okay, um, maybe I go back to uh, the GitHub page then. So on the main page, there's an overview of the, the kind of maybe more popular Laney programs, which I can um, quickly talk about what they do. So uh, Alan Crow layers, don't worry about that. Um, it's basically uh, the, the predecessor for the Alan 2 layers that we already talked about. Alan Boko is a program that reads in images with and without blood gnarling in order to do a bold correction in VASO. It also kind of, if you want to have it, um, shifts the null images and the not null images um, by, by integer numbers of, of TRs to see if, if there are some correlations of bold in VASO. Um, or anti-correlation for that matter. And furthermore, it also, um, if you have a block design, kind of averages within and across uh, blocks um, too. There, the columnar dist is a, a program that estimates um, units of um, distance that are perpendicular to the layers. Um, and there's also LN2 columns that does that uh, too. Imagero is kind of uh, the opposite of origami, namely it doesn't fold stuff, so then it unfolds stuff. It takes the output of the columns and then uh, flattens it. There's also a program now, Ellen, to um, flatten, patch flatten, in fact, and um, which works together with uh, multilaterate, which does the columns in a kind of um, orthogonalized uh, grid. A grad smooth is another program that does layer smoothing, but not based on predefined layers like the a layer smooth um, program does. Grad smooth instead uses the image intensity itself in order to um, estimate um, kind of where probably that the layers would be. Maybe I can click on the block here and then you, you see uh, what it does. So here basically for every voxel it sees in its vicinity um, how similar is the signal intensity in a reference image around this voxel. Here for example this voxel has very similar intensity along this direction and then based on this similarity and the spatial proximity, it defines a smoothing kernel that, uh, to, to, to do a layer smoothing, which then helps a lot, for example, here to visualize this double stripe in the motor cortex of this very example data set that we just looked at. The smoothing um, by means of Allen layer smooth is um, more specific. However, it requires an input of the layers, which the grad smooth does not. So this means that for uh, layer smoothing, you actually need to have segmentation done already, which is sometimes a limiting factor. And there are certain options, for example, the sulk touch option or no, no kissing option in previous versions in order to avoid smoothing across cortical sulci. And then um, you can also apply the same, of course, in within columns and have some directional smoothing, um, which sometimes can be helpful in for minimum intensity projection or also smoothing across time, if which would be called uh, low pass filtering or something like that. Um, which would be the Allen Temp Smooth. Let's go back what are other programs we have here. So we have, for example, intensity projection, like maximum in min minimum intensity projection, which is pretty for straightforward and you can probably easily implement this in MATLAB, Python or whatever you use. It's also there in Laney. Um, the MP2 HD noise is something that we will also talk about in the artifact session maybe, but it basically helps you to get rid of the kind of background noise by means of the regularization term here following the isomer abstract from Kieran O'Brien. Oh, I hope I did cite him somewhere. Uh, probably I did and I don't see it right now. 
Um, this is based on the, the ISMM presentation from Kieran O'Brien. And um, I think there's a similar implementation about uh, background denoising also from Jose Marquez in, in MATLAB. Ah, there, Kieran O'Brien. Ah, I did cite him. Okay, so um, you can use a regularization, namely the beta here. You just give it the uh, inversion time one and inversion time two to get rid of the, the background uh, noise. And this also very often helps in, in, in uh, VASO data for that matter to, to get a kind of uh, T1-like EPI data. All right, um, what else do we have? We have the LN2 um, dvein. So whenever you click on the, the re respective program on GitHub, it, it sends you to a respective blog post. And here for the deveining, there are different kind of deveining models implemented in Laney, and namely just uh, detrending it, basically getting rid of the, the offset. Obviously, the physiological assumptions behind that are rather, um, but they can be challenged, let's say. Then you can also see the, the superficial bias as a kind of gain multiplicative factor, which might be more accurate, but still not optimal. And then you can also kind of use the deconvolution model, which I guess is the most physiological a reasonable approach. However, it also results in the most noise amplification. And this is done on a, a layer basis, column basis, and also based on the vascular reactivity, which you can get based on the low frequency fluctuations of the residuals and to, to kind of get rid of this superficial bias in, in, in bold to make it look more like the vaso, especially the um, here the devoin based on the deconvolution makes the vaso look more like the bold, however, with the respective noise amplification. We actually talked about the skew, which gives you some um, kind of noise measures, higher order noise measures, also kind of very simple thing. And noise kernel um, and, and other stuff. Maybe important programs. Let's see what we have in the version 2.0. Um, LN. Uh, these are the Lenny programs in version 2.0. Uh, maybe one thing that uh, does not have a blog post yet, but I mentioned already, is the multilaterate and the patch flatten, which is uh, something that Farouk wrote from scratch, and it's quite convenient also for, for like flattening that the cortex. And the uh, LN2 Rimify is a program that um, kind of takes segmentation, for example, output from Brain Voyager or whatever, and then turns it into a RIM file that you can use for, for the uh, layerification. Um, what else is important? I think the. Let's see. Yeah, you can correlate to files, which is also self-explanatory. Like if you have bold and vaso uh, acquired simultaneously, you just correlate this. Or if you have two runs, you can see kind of how consistent or how different the, the uh, data are. Maybe LN Colmo, LN2 Colmo is a program that can be quite uh, useful because it takes whatever layers you have and kind of adds additional layers on either side. It's just growing layers into what's white matter furthermore and growing layers into what's CSF um, uh, more and more. And then you end up with thicker layers. For example, if um, you, you get, end up with a profile that just goes more towards the left and the right, because in fact, it might be weird why the signal doesn't go down to, to white matter over there. Similarly, in bold, we still have 1% signal in way. So here we even have a, Oh, well, the zero line might be somewhere there. So we have some negative signal there. So imagine the zero here, we might actually go back to zero. In bold, we, we have a signal percent of one. So why? This is probably due to a partial voluming. So we can extend the, the, the profiles and then um, see how long it takes before in white matter, the signal goes down to, to baseline, which is the LN2 Colmo. And I think those are the most important features. So um, now we can move to GatherTown and discuss these algorithms or, or your implementation, uh, your experiences or your questions about the implementations in more detail.